All right, g'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for today's version of last week's video, looking at the top five preliminary finals in the AFL that I've ever seen. So like last week, do have to qualify it by saying I've only started watching football for about 20 years now. So it's over the last 20 or so seasons that I'm gonna be looking at these prelim finals. If you didn't catch last week's video, by all means go and check it out. It was uploaded about a week ago on the True Footy YouTube channel, as you can imagine. But today we're gonna to kick off with the sequel of it, the best prelims. Now I'm sure like many of you, I am absolutely pumped for the prelims this coming weekend. We will be in attendance at Melbourne versus Geelong at Optus Stadium on Friday night, which I can't wait for, but also also, we're going to be live streaming the Saturday night clash between Port Adelaide and the Western Bulldogs as well. So make sure you are there to join in all the fun. First prelim we're going to talk about is between the Collingwood Magpies and GWS in 2019. Now the Magpies had finished top four this year and had earned this home prelim by beating the minor premiers Geelong in week one of the finals. Having been runners up the year before, they were considered pretty strong favorites over the Giants in this game. The Giants on the other hand had finished sixth, beating the Bulldogs in week one before upsetting the Lions in a classic semi-final that we covered in last week's video. In wet conditions, the Pies would get the opening goal of what would become a very low scoring affair. By the end of the first term, only three goals had been kicked and the Pies held a three point Point lead. The halftime margin would remain the same as both sides would fail to keep more than just one goal each in the second term. The third quarter is where this game was broken open. The hero from the previous week, Brent Daniels, would put the Giants in front before Zach Williams would snap truly to extend the margin to 10 points. The Giants wouldn't stop there, however, banging home five unanswered goals in the term to put Collingwood on the brink of elimination. The Giants led the low scoring game by 33 points at the six minute mark of the final term and it appeared that the Pies would need nothing short of a miracle to win the game. But to their credit, they found a response. Despite having just kicked three goals in the first three and a bit quarters of the game, they managed to kick four unanswered goals to really rein the Giants back in. Chris Main would take a strong mark in the forward 50 with six minutes remaining with his side trailing by six points, but his shot on goal would fall short and be touched through from behind. Taylor Adams would then nearly pull off an incredible left footed snap after a stoppage, but his kick would hit the post, reducing the margin to just four points. With seconds to go, the Pies had one more desperate surge forward inside 50, only for the Giants to successfully repel the attack and hold on to a dramatic four point victory. After the previous year's heartbreaking grand final loss, this game would be particularly devastating for Collingwood. The Giants on the other hand, would go on to play in their first ever grand final as a club the following week against Richmond. The next prelim we're going to discuss is the Giants versus the Western Bulldogs back in 2016. This time the Giants would be playing the role of preliminary final host, having finished fourth and upsetting the minor premier Sydney in week one of the finals. The Bulldogs on the other hand had finished seventh and came into this game with the momentum of having two upset finals wins over Hawthorne and West Coast in the previous fortnight. Now the Giants would have the home ground advantage, but there was a very strong Bulldogs present in the crowd that night. The Dogs would jet the jump in this game, kicking the first two through clever goals to Clay Smith and Tory Dixon. The Giants would respond late in the first term and the margin would just be two points the way the Bulldogs had quarter time. The second term would see some carnage, with two players in Jordan Roughhead and Callan Ward having to leave the game due to injury. In that term, the Bulldogs stretched their halftime lead to nine points after a four goal to three second term. The teams would trade goals in the third term with neither side able to gain any meaningful ascendancy. The Giants threatened to take the game away, opening up an 11 point lead before goals to Bontempelli and Caleb Daniel ensured the margin was just one point at the final change. The Giants would break out to an early two goal lead in the fourth term, but again, the Bulldogs would have their own response. Tory Dixon bobbed up for the third time that game for a goal before a devastating Jason Johannesson run opened up the Giants as Bontempelli kicked the goal to put them in front. Cordy then goaled to extend the lead while Patton did the same for the hosts and suddenly the game was all even in the dying stages of the game. With three minutes to go, Jack McRae would mark inside 50 and kick just his second goal of the game to give the Dogs the lead. In the dying seconds, Stringer would find Tory Dixon all alone inside 50 and the Dogs were all but assured of victory. They would hold on for a dramatic six point win, qualifying against all odds for the grand final. And as you may remember, they would go on to become the first ever AFL Premiers to win from seventh place. The next prelim we're gonna talk about was between Hawthorne and Port Adelaide at the MCG in 2014. The reigning Premier's Hawthorne earned the right to host this prelim after beating the Cats in week one of the finals. 
The Power, on the other hand, had finished fifth, having to beat Richmond in Adelaide and then Fremantle in Perth to qualify for this prelim. After an even start, it would be the underdog Power who would pull away to an early lead through goals to Monfries and Robbie Gray. The Power would dominate the contest in the opening term, registering 17 inside 50s to 7, but couldn't generate more than a 12 point lead due to kicking 3 goals 9 27. In the second term, it would be the reigning Premiers who flexed their muscle, banging home 6 goals to 2 to claim an 11 point lead at half time. The dominance didn't stop there, however, kicking 5 goals to 3 in the third term and opening up a 23 point margin at the final change. The game appeared to be fizzling in the final term with the Hawks opening up a 28 point margin with 11 minutes remaining. And then with 7 minutes to go, the margin was still 22 points. But the power would ensure that there was another twist in this tail. Wingard would kick a lovely banana shot at goal for a set shot from the boundary before a Jared Polak long bomb would be ruled a goal after the score review. Angus Monfries would then goal from a set shot and the margin was cut to 4 points with just 3 minutes remaining. The power then had a great opportunity to steal the prelim when Andrew Moore had a tough set shot from hard up against the boundary. Unfortunately for him, his set shot sailed wide of the post and was punched through for a behind. The Hawks would hold on to a three point victory, allowing them to defend their premiership status the following week against Sydney in the grand final. The next prelim we're going to talk about is between Hawthorne once again and the Geelong Cats back in 2013. That year, the rivals in Hawthorne and Geelong finished top two, with the Hawks winning their first final in week one to earn the right to host this prelim. The Cats, having been upset by Fremantle in week one of the finals, had to overcome Port Adelaide to face off in this prelim decider. Much had been said of the Kennett curse during this particular week, with Jeff Kennett having famously declared that Hawthorne would always beat Geelong when it mattered. The Hawks hadn't beaten the Cats in 11 attempts since their 2008 Grand Final victory, but this would be the first time they had met in a final since that day. The game started evenly, although the Cats were punished at times for some poor foot skills. Equally, the Hawks were quite poor in front of goal, trailing by one point at quarter time despite having double the scoring shots. It would be another even second term with the Hawks gaining a four point lead before the Cats managed to take control of the game in the third term. Geelong would pile on seven goals to three in that term, taking all the momentum and a 20 point lead into the final quarter. The Hawks got the first goal of the final term through a clever goal to Buddy Franklin before Geelong had a steadier of their own through Josh Caddy. The Hawks then responded through goals to Brad Hill and Jack Gunston and suddenly the margin was cut back to four points. With five minutes remaining, Sean Burgoyne would slot a clutch goal to give the minor premiers back the lead and an agonizing final few minutes would ensue. With 30 seconds to go, Travis Barco had a golden opportunity to level the scores, missing a shot in front of goal, and it would prove to be Geelong's final shot at winning the game. The Hawks would hold on to a five point victory in the prelim, going on to beat Fremantle the following week in the grand final. The fifth and final prelim I'm gonna highlight is once again involving Hawthorne. This time, it was the 2012 prelim between Hawthorne and the Adelaide Crows at the MCG. For whatever reason, for the third year in a row, Hawthorne were involved in an incredible prelim. Both the Hawks and the Crows had finished top two that season, with the Hawks earning the right to host this prelim after beating Collingwood in week one of the finals. Adelaide, on the other hand, had lost in week one to eventual Premier Sydney before overcoming Fremantle in the semi-final in Adelaide. The away team would get the better of the start in this particular contest, with goals through Kurt Tippett and Ricky Henderson before Clinton Young responded from long range for the Hawks. The Crows would earn a seven point quarter time margin and would extend that lead early in the second term through Taylor Walker. The Hawks then responded through goals to Buddy Franklin, Bruce and Burgoyne, which affected the fifth lead change of the first half. Taylor Walker was proving very difficult for the Hawks to contain and he kicked two late goals in that first half to give the Crows back the lead of five points at half time. The third term would be where the Hawks took control of the contest, with Buddy Franklin in particular getting off the chain as the Hawks kicked six goals to three. A late goal in the third term to Brody Smith cut the margin back to 16 points and it would give the Crows some momentum to work with going into the final quarter. Tippett would go early in the fourth to cut the margin back to 11 points before controversy reigned as Paul Pleasure goaled from an overturned free kick. Amazingly, with five minutes to go, the Crows earned a one point lead through a Graham Johncock goal and have looked on the brink of an unlikely away prelim win. However, Cyril Rioli and Buddy Franklin would then combine to spoil the Adelaide party late in the game. Taylor Walker would then nail a set shot with 20 seconds remaining on the clock to give Adelaide a slight chance of victory, but it would prove too tall an order and the Hawks would progress to a grand final against Sydney the following week. 
well, there you have it, guys. That is the five best prelims that I've seen as a football fan in my time watching the AFL. As always, I welcome you in the comments. Let me know some of your favorite prelim final memories, even if it's just a classic game or if it's just a singular moment that you can remember. As I said at the start of the video, guys, make sure you're sticking fat with True Footy over this final series. Subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you're there to take part in the live streams we're going to be doing each weekend. Hope you're enjoying the content, guys. Look forward to reading your comments and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.